Okay, I have to start this one off right. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you waited for. Ah, I don't know the rest of the words, but that's a bold movie, uh, The Greatest Showman, just to start off the movie with, this is the greatest fucking show you will ever watch. Welcome to another episode of Cancel Sweezy. Like always, I am Sweezy, and uh, we are on the 10th episode of Cancel Sweezy. Uh, usually, I don't feel the need to actually say what episode we are on on the show uh, for at least the last nine of them besides the first one where i said this is the first episode of cancel sweezy uh but it's we're finally in double digits uh next goal is triple digits of this show which may take a minute because uh there's only like 52 weeks in a year so we're gonna have to go for a minute on this show uh before we're gonna get there but i believe in i believe in us and i believe in uh how we are going to be doing the show today um like always i am sweezy and today is going to be the best episode of cancel sweezy only because the other nine I I intended to be bad, and so this one has to be best by default uh, in regards to how good the show is. So uh, let me go into some news about me uh, because I'm like Tinkerbell because I if I don't get attention, then I die. And so let's please let's give myself attention some quick attention real quick uh my new ep ride or die is out now so i record this on fridays the for the previous the next mondays of when the episodes come out so right now the ep ride or die is out five songs all terrific i can't decide honestly i can't decide which one is my favorite because it switches all the time which is how you know you actually created something good as an artist at least with music and wise if you create an album you can't decide which one on the album is your favorite so uh in regards to that i switch every day on which one's my favorite and which i mean i really like but it's out now spotify apple music deezer youtube We're getting ready to release the music video for the title track ride or die fgt rtd for girls that ride till death uh it's very exciting we did have a listening party the previous wednesday uh that stream is still up on the sweetie facebook page so if you want to be part of the of the whole process and listen to me talk and answer questions and uh say who i'd fuck marry kill uh, it's very exciting for that. So listening party saw on uh, Facebook. It's not as exciting because you missed it. You weren't there live. Uh, sucks to be you. Go fuck yourself. But uh, no, it's uh, it's still up there. But the whole EP is out now. Uh, I love I love this thing. Uh, my Instagram uh, follow me everywhere at the Shweezy uh, shows a lot of things. I put the album credits. I put uh, who I'm thankful for. I uh, put a little note there on what the EP means to me and kind of my meaning behind it. This is a Pandy EP, uh, Pandy short for pandemic. Uh, I wrote this. I started it in March and uh, I kind of finished writing it, I would say July. And then you have to do mixing and kind of finish the arrangements and all that stuff. So uh, I'm just happy to have it out probably later than I wanted it to be. But it's out now and I'm so happy y'all get to listen to it. It's uh, super great. And, and I really like that. So if Garth really likes it, that means I really like it. So go check it out. Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, YouTube, Amazon, wherever you get your music from. I don't know. Most people just get Spotify or Apple because uh, that's what's convenient for them. It's weird people get Apple Music because I just think Spotify has the market on that. But nevertheless, he persisted. And the he is me. Um, but my pronouns are he, him, king, daddy. And I'm here for the show today. Um, if you end up liking the show, uh, we are on YouTube. It is a video show as well. I know a lot. we get a lot of audio listeners. But if you want to watch me talk uh, and be cool like that, uh, we are on YouTube. just under the Schwedcast YouTube page. It's all under there. Hopefully we're going to have a new name for that. Maybe like the Schweezy Podcast Universe. Maybe something like that. We're going to figure that out in the meantime. But go like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, but also like and subscribe wherever you're getting your podcast at and leave a review because leaving a review is really cool. People like it or people into podcasting really into it when you leave reviews. So go leave a review on the show, like subscribe and like everything. Just in, just enjoy everything. I need the attention. Like I've told you, I need the attention uh, to keep myself alive. I am Tinkerbell. I need the attention to stay alive. Um, also, if you like watching people play video games, specifically me, play video games uh you can go check me out every monday and thursday over on twitch i'm still figuring out what games i'm gonna be playing right now uh but it's gonna be a lot of fun i usually have a lot of fun and uh talking to people it's always a lot of fun and i get into cool cool conversations and uh and i really like that so if that's any case to check out 
me on uh, Twitch, uh, do it. And you can also follow me. And there's two buttons on Twitch. Follow, which is free. Then there's a subscribe button. Now, typically, um, to press to subscribe to someone on Twitch, it is typically $5 a month. However, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you connect your Amazon Prime and your Twitch account together, and you get one free subscribe every month. And uh, why don't you just uh, link that towards your account towards me? Because if you don't do that, basically, since I said it was $5 without an Amazon Prime account, you're basically giving Jeff Bezos $5. And we don't want that bitch getting any more money than he needs to have, especially on his uh, Twitch platform, Twitch the Game channel changer and uh good for my hair and everything i'm always messing with my hair on the show it's like it's always like it's getting volume but it's like falling down so uh, i don't know i might do something with it on the break i haven't decided yet i might just leave it the way it is but uh no uh so yeah go like and subscribe and if you you know amazon prime account go subscribe over on twitch be cool uh, if you want to be the ultimate supporter of what I do over here in my podcast universe. Uh, smash, uh, go to the Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash the Shweezy, or no, the Shwegcast. And uh, you get ad-free episodes, uh, Cancel Shweezy, the Shwegcast, all the kit and caboodle, all the cool stuff. And you basically get the honor of supporting me directly, which is very great. But best thing you can do if you don't have money and you're poor and you're sad is you can always just like and subscribe to the show best thing you can possibly do and uh that's the only way i'm gonna love you and that's the only way you have to validate your love towards me and the only way to do that is to subscribe to the podcast and me on facebook too there's a facebook page we gotta i gotta promote the facebook page and follow me everywhere on social media at the shweezy uh you know what sites i'm on and not on so uh yeah, come hang out with me and do cool shit like that. So, uh, like I always say, you don't need money, don't need fame, don't need no credit card to ride this train. You know what that means, folks. We're getting into the news. I got some fun news articles today for you. Uh, the only way I know how is to go through the news. Uh, let's just get to this first article. <clears throat> Bethlehem, and I had to put in parentheses, Connecticut, firefighters rescue cow from pool. And this is from News Time, a uh, valuable news source. A cow was rescued after it escaped its pen and fell into a pool late Thursday night, according to fire officials. The Bethlehem Volunteer Fire Department was called to the area of Thompson Road and Sunny Ridge Road for a report of a large animal rescue around 10.45 p.m. Thursday. Arriving units found a cow trapped in an in-ground swimming pool. Fire officials said the cow had escaped its pen and fallen through the corner of the pool firefighters in cold water rescue suits went into the pool and cut the cow free from the cover they helped the cow swim to the shallow end once in the shallow end firefighters on the outside of the pool helped with ropes and slings to get the cow to climb to the pool stairs and get out of the pool so this must be one of those nice underground pools uh the cow was in uninjured and returned to its owners official says so a uh, good story that the cow was rescued i just think the human response to this would have to be funny. So owners of this pool, they're probably inside. Um, where, where is this Connecticut? So that's where white, some white people are made. Uh, so it seems they're a white couple. They have a swimming pool. It's 10 45 PM. Uh, it was a port of a large animal rescue around. So yeah, it sounds like they were probably in the pool. All of a sudden they just hear skadoosh, you know, something like that. Uh, the cow falls into the pool and then you're just like, what the hell um, is going on outside? And then, like, it's white people here, so they probably have a gun. And so, honey, come look at it. It's like, okay, I'm assuming they're old white, old and white. Uh, so, and old white people have guns. So they go outside with their gun and uh, just see what all commotion is. And uh, you don't see a robber. You don't see a teenager uh, being ridiculous. You don't see anything else. All you see is a cow in your pool. And if I saw a cow, if I had a swimming pool, first of all, and I saw a cow in there. I I go to bed. I'm like, I'm going to bed. I'm not dealing with this right now. That's too much. That's a sensory overload for me. Like, I cannot do that. That's too much at once going on. And that is not cool. Um, but yeah, I didn't know. So yeah, that's a weird thing. Like, uh, in situations, because I've been marking that up. Like, I think a couple weeks ago, we saw like a house. Uh, there's they like mistaked a mountain lion, a house cat for a mountain lion or something like that. And they just sent like the police out there to me. It's just kind of like, what the fuck are the police going to do? Like just sh all the police are going to be able to do is shoot it. Like they're not going to be able to do anything else. Like, why would you not call like animal 
control or whatever they're called. Uh, but no, in this situation, because I feel like the fire department would be the only one with the equipment to actually get the cow out. So I think that makes sense at least. But then you think like firefighters, uh, just like, uh, is this a fire? No, uh, a cow's in a pool. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Like, just thinking, like, what are we doing today on my job? Like, I, I remember these good, good, wholesome firefighters coming home. Hey, honey, how was work today? Or they come in the morning, watch the sleep, just going, hey, honey, how was work? It's like, um, yeah, we helped a cow get out of a pool today. Uh, that was exciting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just glad the cow's okay. And uh, one day I'll die and uh, make a very delicious steak. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad. I kinda, it's kind of a funny, positive story. Uh, but at least the cow is okay. I just, I just don't know how I would handle it if that was like my home and a cow went into my pool. So, all right. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, that's all I have to say on that. Next one. I'm pretty sure most of you have probably heard of, but I'm going to go over through anyway, because fuck you. Uh, let's see here. Just fix the hair really quick. All right. A woman hallucinates for months after eating five-day-old gas station sushi. And this is from The Takeout. Uh, Sounds like a food blog, hopefully, maybe? I don't know. A woman identified only as JC famished one night after work, came home and found hardly anything to eat in the refrigerator. She took a gamble and ate the five-day-old gas station sushi that had been ripening in her fridge, and boy, did things go south after that. The Daily Mirror recounts the harrowing tale, first shared on YouTube by verified users and allegedly licensed health provider Chubby Emu, whose who's, okay, who's video contained crude reenactments what oh variations on cases or my colleagues have seen in the past so you can take this story with a grain of salt but know that sushi related tapeworms are actually a thing according to npr story from 2018 i could have told you that it's fucking raw fish i don't like sushi and i won't eat sushi because that is not that should not be food you got to cook your food you cook your food and if you don't cook it, it's already been cooked and it's been sent to you. Um, anyways, after back to JC, aside from tasting a little sour, the sushi went down quickly with a dose of soy sauce. The, then the symptoms began. Everything started with insomnia and the woman's sleep issues escalated into anxiety and confusion, plus an elevated heart rate that felt as if it were beating out of her neck. Next came the stomach cramps. She feel her stomach jiggling before she went to the bathroom. As time went by, JC started suffering from malnutrition and con- conscience hallucinations of bugs crawling up the walls underneath her skin and bouts of anxiety. If all of this sounds like the beginning of a horror movie, well, it sort of is because things got worse. Seizures followed. Then there was a barrage of testing until finally doctors found evidence of tapeworm eggs in her stool along with broken segments from a tapeworm. They identified it as, all right, here we go. Big word time. Diphlobothrium latern, because, okay, one of the largest, which can grow up to nine meters. Um, let's, I don't know how meters are. What's nine meters to feet? Oh, you don't say it. Okay, 29.50. Jesus Christ. Lord and Savior. Ave, Ave Maria. That's rough, buddy. Okay, so, um, that is fucking brutal. And, you know, I, I guess we're all judging her right now and saying, why would you eat gas station sushi? Now... I can't be judging her for doing that. I've been on tour. You stop at a lot of gas stations. So naturally, you just eat the shit gas station food. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes you get the, like, love's pretty good. Uh, hot dogs are always a gamble. Um, I, um, quick, if you're in like Kansas City, you get Quick Trip. That shit's good. Missouri, Kansas, stuff like that. That shit's good. Um, here, Speedway is pretty good. Uh, Wawa is pretty good. You know, that gas station food. I'm assuming this isn't a good gas station. <laughs> um, five day old sushi. But the thing is, like, how do tapeworms get in that shit? To be, I guess it's just sushi. Uh, that's why I don't believe in eating sushi, and you shouldn't either. And so, if you like sushi and you're mad at me for saying that, um, you can take your opinion and shove it up your butt. But now, let's stop judging her for eating gas station sushi, because um, we've all probably eaten a lot worse. Don't act holier than thou. For the gas station sushi. 
But the the question is, what how the hell did I want to know how tapeworms get into sushi? If you know, send that an email to the webcast at gmail dot com because I'm actually into that. I want to know how the hell that happens because I want to know how tapeworms. Like I kind of understand like when it's like on the if you walk like barefoot outside a lot, how that can get it. You get a cut and then the tapeworm sneaks in. I kind of get that, but like. And like a packaged food source, is they just like from China or something like that? And they just send it over with their bats and dogs and dog food and ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. That's rough, buddy. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, if you don't like sushi, uh, come at me. This is the type of guy you get. So I can't I can, uh, tell you how to live. So, uh, yeah. So uh, don't be. Um, come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. Don't act like you're holier than now. We've all eaten pretty gross stuff before, bad stuff before. And uh, I have the fat rolls to prove it. Okay. Next one is controversial only for people who are secretly uh, home homosexuals. Uh, male student given in school suspension for wearing nail polish to Texas high school. Of course, it's in Texas. It's from NBC News. <coughs> All right, let's get into it. An openly gay Texas teenager called out his high school after he was given in-school suspension for whaling nail polish. Trevor Wilkinson, 17, said he originally received the suspension on Monday after he returned from Thanksgiving break with the nails painted, which violates his school's dress code. Imagine your school not allowing boys to paint their nails and giving boys ISS, in-school suspension, or I call ass because it's stupid, uh, for it. He said in a tweet on Monday, and the whole administration being okay with it, homophobic and sexist, welcome to West Texas, the same day, the Clyde High School senior created a change.org petition demanding that boys be allowed to wear nail polish. Clyde, a town of just under 4,000, is about 135 mess files west of Fort Worth. The Clyde Consolidated Independent School District did not comment on the incident with Wilkinson, but said in a statement Friday that it conducts a diligent and thoughtful review of its dress code policy on an annual basis. That review process results in the development of a final dress code that is consistently implemented and enforced during the next school year. Parents and students are provided a copy of the dress code prior to the start of each new school year, the district said. Questions or concerns with the dress code are reviewed individually, and the district cannot share any information regarding a specific student. The student handbook says that men are prohibited from wearing makeup and nail polish. If a campus administrator determines that the student is in violation of the dress code, the student will be given an opportunity to correct the problem at school. It says, if not corrected, the student may be assigned to in-school suspension for the remainder of the day until the problem is corrected, or until a parent or designee brings an acceptable change of clothing to the school. Repeated offenses may result in more serious disciplinary actions in accordance with the student code of conduct. Wilkinson said that he believes the dress code is discriminatory. It's really sad to me because I feel like it's 2020 and we should be progressing and not taking steps back, he said in a phone interview Saturday, and it makes me really sad because I know that there are other people who feel like this and feel like they can't express themselves and that they never will be able to because of people like this who are not open-minded enough to see another perspective. The teen said he met with the school's principal and vice principal and he was told that if he did not remove his nail polish, he would remain in suspension. Uh, I'm not taking off my nails and I'm staying in ISS because it's completely wrong, he said. As of Saturday afternoon, more than 35,000 people have signed Wilkinson's petition to show their support. He said he hopes this encourages his school to change the dress code policy. Okay, now this is fucking stupid and definitely Texas, so... White people, white people! So, there's a lot of things. I have a lot of comments. Um, I'm just taking a look here. Uh, ISS obviously should be called ASS because it's so fucking stupid. Oh, uh, so you're just going to stay in school? I'm like, why is also... A suspension from high school like oh you can't come to school today um that sounds like a fucking reward like hey guess what you can't come to school today the only like worst part is how your parents are gonna deal with it like since you're a kid you can't there's a lot of things like can't legally do but if like you you lived on if i was with me right now and i had to be in high school uh, i'd just be like all right you're suspended you can't come to school for three days i'm like oh no what am i gonna do and just play video games all day oh no uh so, yeah, but he's an ISS, which is like you sit in a room uh, doing nothing, just doing your schoolwork all day, which is like, okay, I mean, just get your work done. It's like, you're fat. We're sending you to, it's like, you're fat. We're sending you to jail. Oh, no, I'm going to be able to lose weight or stuff like that. Um, but I don't know. The idea of, like, nail polish, it's it's funny to me. Uh, 
back in the day when I lived in Kansas, uh, before my brother came out to the world as being a uh, homosexual. I need to get a hot gay soundbite from community. That'd be a good one. All right, in the meantime, uh, best... Uh, I remember me and my friend, they were doing some weird like fundraiser thing. Me and my friend were like joking around and we decided, let's get our nails painted because it's funny. And so like we got our nails painted and they thought it was funny too. And it's just a joke. Nothing like gay or anything involved in that. I came home and my mom saw them and she was like, <gasps> she like freaked out and like made me remove them immediately because she didn't want people thinking I was gay. Uh, and then even like when I like wanted to grow out my hair, like, and, like my mom thought I was transgender. I'm like, no, I'm not transgender. Uh, I like rock music. Rock musicians have their hair long. I just want to be like that. I want to find like a style I'm comfortable with. And that's like today I'm still like worried about like trying to find a style. And like I just feel there's some some weird trauma there that I'm still trying to get over. But this kid's like wearing nail polish. Like what the fuck is like I'm going to do? I know a lot of teachers. Uh, I bet if my mom saw this, she was like, well, it's a distraction to the other students. Like is he just like flaunting them? He's just, like, has him painted and, like, minding his own fucking business. Like, give it a fucking break. And then, like, you're, the, the thing is, like, the administration is giving a shit about this. Like, don't you have don't you have a job to do? Like, don't you supposed to be teaching fucking kids right now? Uh, stop fucking, like, being a fucking homophobic piece of shit. You're teaching students. A lot of students are going to be gay. They're going to be transgender. You're not, you're not supposed to. You shouldn't be a teacher if you have problems with home. If you're homophobic or sexist or uh, transphobic. Like, you shouldn't have a fucking job doing that if you have a problem with that students are going to come out as gay they're going to come out as transgender uh they're not going to be just fucking ideals of who you think a man and a woman are so like just fucking get over it it's fucking painted nails like you should be able to get over that I, if i see someone a man with painted nails i look over and like oh that guy has painted nails all right and like especially if i'm not talking to him leave him the fuck alone like what the fucking point of this and like he's talking to the fucking administration about this if i was in there i had a i keep having like this reoccurring dream that like i so i I have a bachelor's degree in music technology uh degree right there i'm pointing to it uh but i keep having this like reoccurring dream that i get sent back to high school because there's like oh you you didn't take like two classes so you don't have a high school diploma so your bachelor's degree doesn't count until you uh take these two classes but then i like i'm taking a full load and like i have to take like all music music classes on top of that too for some fucking reason um anyways though and so like i'll just have like dreams i got one like i got sent to the principal's office and i just like kept arguing with them for no reason i'm like this is fucking stupid like what are we doing right now uh it's like and i mean like i'm a fully grown adult so what are you gonna do call my parents like the fuck are they gonna do um but like, yeah, I'll just I'll just continue arguing. I'm like, so so why I would just like try to I would like start recording and like I would just start recording on my phone. Just like I'm gonna record this because uh, I'll just make sure you know what you're saying. Uh, and then be like, so what's the problem with the nail polish? It's not right. It's against the dress code. Why is it against the dress code? It's like uh, because we don't want men uh, looking like women. Oh, so what's the problem with that? And then like just keep agging them on. Like I would just I would just go for it. I'd be like, look, uh, let's do it. And I'd like try to record them. And then, like, it's like, here's what here's what's going on at this school. And uh, but it's like also Texas, so they probably won't give a shit anyways. But, yeah, I'd just be like, what's what's the problem? Why do you have a problem with this? Are you secretly? I would just ag them on. I kind of want to go to high school and do this now, too. I want to, like, piss off a principal. That'd be a lot of fun. Like, so so what's your problem with it? Like, if this was my kid and they're like, we need you to come to the school. We need to talk with you right now. I just I just because my parents would take any adult side. Um, and then I know a lot of people was like, you shouldn't take always take the teacher's side but you should take both opinions into consideration and then like you know take it like an adult and like what's the proof here you gotta think for your fucking self parents you shouldn't like be taking your child you shouldn't take your child's side immediately and you also shouldn't take the teacher's side immediately or the principal's side immediately you gotta hear the facts you gotta hear what went on and you got to make a decision from there. Like if you have a child and they get into a fight, but they were not the ones starting it, they were just defending themselves. You shouldn't, your child shouldn't be in trouble. And be like, why is my child in trouble for defending themselves? They should just get the crap. They should get the shit beating out of them from someone while you do fucking nothing. And like, you, you see this all the fucking time. Like teachers will just bolt. You'll, you'll see like these, kids will like bully another student and then the one time they decide to like defend themselves or like you know defend themselves like all of a sudden that student's in trouble not them because my school like the 
principal is like a football or well, the vice principal, the one in charge of like disciplinary action was a football coach. So like all those kids, they somehow never got in trouble. But, uh, you know, of course, like these fucking kids getting picked on, of course. But uh, that one guy who we kind of just like try to pick on everyone, he never picked on me because like, he was he was pretty fat. So I just made fun of him for being fat. And like I have the right to make fun of someone for being fat. He was a lot fatter than me. So. Uh, that was called he called me like a cheeseburger hair but he overdosed on drugs and is now dead and so uh i'll say his first name fuck you clay glad burning hell uh but anyways though um anyways though yeah this uh school is sucks and uh they need to their faculty needs to focus more on teaching and less on fucking students with nail polish on you're in a pandemic i know your job is hard enough but you got to pick your battles and this is not a battle you should try and take just fucking leave it alone all right let's let's move on this one makes me fun this one makes me happy so let's go to this one traps twitter account has finally been suspended this is from loudwire let's talk about some music for a little bit and the nine month hot mess inside a dumpster fire inside a train wreck has come to a screeching halt Trap's Twitter account has finally suspended after frontman Chris Taylor Brown vehemently defended underage sexual encounters between teenage boys and adult women. As the COVID-19 pandemic began to ravage the planet, Chris Taylor Brown became one of the most inflammatory users on Twitter by defending President Trump's COVID response, blaming George Floyd for his own death, threatening to fight or sue countless Twitter users, supporting neo-fascist groups, the Proud Boys, and more. Brown's Proud Boys support got trapped removed from Instagram and Facebook, but Twitter didn't take action until the musician began publicly defending statutory rape. It all began with a tweet from the ill-tempered podcast, which kicked off a back and forth. A 15-year-old male and a 25-year-old female, you know, only cool people say female. And I also want to say, I started saying female ironically, and then... Then I started saying it unironically, and I'm working on fixing myself. I will try to fix me. But, uh, yeah, no, let's move on. Uh, 25, a 15-year-old, 15-year male and a 25-year-old female is not pedophilia, you fucking moron, Brown later tweeted. I wouldn't care if a 15-year-old boy banged his 25-year-old teacher. That's it, dot, dot, dot. I would be giving the kid high fives, Brown continued in yet another tweet. Only if the teacher was hot, though, dot, 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 so much worse when a grown man does it with a 14-year-old girl. They get much tougher prison sentences, so society agrees with me. As long as the kid wasn't sad about it, I mean, the teacher could break his heart, and that would be sad. <laughs> By the psychological definition, what Brown described does not constitute pedophilia, but ephibophilia which is defined as the primary interest in mid to late adolescence generally age 15 to 19 pedophilia is described as adult sexual interest in a prepubescent child or children generally ages 13 or younger however the in incidents brown defense do fall under the legal definition of statutory rape only horrible human beings think a five-year-old boy and a 15-year-old teenage boy who had gone through puberty go through the same thing when an older man or woman takes advantage of them Every one of you saying that the pain of these two should be the same is an asshole. What priests have done to little boys is not the same as the stories we've heard about teachers in their mid-20s with 15-year-old boys who've gone through puberty. Anyone making this equivalency is an asshole, Brown wrote. Uh, Brown is incorrect about 15-year-old boys having gone through puberty. Puberty begins and ends at different stages for each individual, but normally occurs between the ages of 12 and 16 for boys. The attraction to prepubescent child is often defined as hepatitis which has been labeled a crime rather than a mental disorder by the psychiat psychiatric times that's actually cool i need to look into that a little bit more dozens of similar tweets filled traps feed on december 6th and 7th only to leave traps twitter account suspended on december 8th all right so uh boot lick i'll lick you on lick boots i'll kill fuck a hero cop uh cops are my but i'll suck a dick of a cop okay first of all the worst thing i would say trapped has ever done was release a greatest hits album when they only have one good song why are you doing that they have like 600 fucking uh I mean, I'm going to spray down my hair after the break. Um, they only have like, they only had like 600 album sales or something like that, which I'm not, 
So I, I act like I'm better than them, but like still, like for a band who's been around this long, you should you should have a decently loyal fan base. They did a, a back the blue protest during the pandy, of course, um, in nowhere Missouri. So like a bunch of shit, like shit, like you're you you obviously are a piece of shit, and I don't know how you get there, at least from being from California. So uh, yeah, so that's first of all. Um, one thing I want to say, so. Here's something I want to say in regards to what he is trying to say. So me as a 15 year old boy, you say you have a hot 25 year old like teacher or whatever come on to you and you get to have sex with her. For you, that's that's amazing and awesome. Like especially if you're like very much consenting to it as a 15 year old. Uh, but now me as a 27 year old, anyone, male, female, like any of my peers that I know in my age range, if they're having sex with like a 15 year old you some red flag has to go off in your head you sh- you yourself shouldn't have shouldn't have a problem with that that's that's a red flag in your mind that you need to deal with so i feel like that that is a good point that is the point i want to say in regards to that a lot of people say it's wrong no matter what and i'm like you know, like it, it just ruins the kid i'm like the kid is gonna like it the kid is gonna like it uh Later on, he'll like realize some things as a teenager that he's probably there's probably some things that messed him up along the way there. But he's at the time he's going to like it. However, as an adult myself, uh, anyone my age range, that's just that's just wrong. Like, you know, it's wrong to do that. So that's that's an opinion I would say there in regards to that. However, um, this is this is funny. The moment like I don't get Twitter anymore. It's just like it's just fascists and people who anti-fascists like going back and forth uh how they all just go on parlor and then uh they all die on parlor so uh yeah so uh fuck trap and uh glad your greatest hits album uh sucks um but anyways you know what garth would not say if it was opposite day this is what garth would if it was opposite day this is what garth would say because uh no one likes trapped and that one song's okay but I mean, Headstrong's okay, but, and even then it's like, it's not that, that like a, uh, meaningful of a song. Like I'm going to take on anyone. It's definitely like that redneck rage. It's like people with like short tempers. I hate people with short tempers. It's probably something psychological there of why I hate people with short tempers. But if you have a short temper, I'm like, I'm not hanging out with you. And it's like, when you work like customer service jobs, like you have to deal with people with short tempers all the time. And it's like, the worst thing ever so uh be nice to people uh and if you're not gonna be nice to people fuck you okay let's go to the last i had another article but we're going pretty far into this last article i have uh and i said the best for last joe exotic asked kim kardashian for help getting presidential pardon and handwritten letter this is from entertainment tonight joe exotic is helping kim kardashian west will help hit get him out behind bars in a new handwritten letter obtained by entertainment tonight the 57-year-old Tiger King star, who is currently in prison, writes to the 40-year-old Re- – Kim Kardashian's 40-year-old? Damn. Star in criminal justice reform activist asking for her help in getting a presidential pardon from President Donald Trump. Joe is currently serving a 22-year prison sentence after being convicted of plotting a murder for hire against Big Cat rescue owner Carol Baskin. Among other changes, as of March 2020, he is incarcerated at FMC Fort Worth in Texas, and in June 2020, Carol received control of Joe's zoo property. Oof. Uh, I know you have never met me and may never want to. However, I do believe that you hold the values of our justice system dear to your heart. Joe writes in the letter dated November 4th, I am writing you this letter not as Joe Exotic, but as the person Joseph Maldonado Passage, asking you to please help me but by just taking 10 minutes out of your life and placing a call to President Trump to look at my 250 save page pardon. It's all the evidence I'm innocent and ask him to sign my pardon so I can return home to my husband dylan passage and my father and my father he added i have lost 57 years of work my zoo my animals my mother has died my dad is dying and i've been taken away from my husband who i love dearly everyone is so busy making movies getting interviews selling stuff and dressing up like me that everyone forgot i'm a real live person in prison and kept from 
even telling my own story for something I didn't do. Joe asked Kim to give him a phone call, promising no one even has to know you did it. In addition to her work with criminal justice reform, Kim, who has been successful in getting several prisoners pardoned, has also shown she's a big Tiger King fan. Back in October, she, mother of four, and her friends, Jonathan Shaban, dressed up as Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic for Halloween with her kids as Tigers. Kim expressed an interest in the series back in March, tweeting, Wow, the amount of texts I've gotten about Tiger King since I tweeted about it all have mentioned their beliefs that Carol killed her husband. What are your thoughts? Do you think Carol killed him? Baskins, Carol fucking Baskins, Big Cat Rescue offered to have Kim come visit her sanctuary, but she never responded publicly to the invite. First of all, I just want to go to the Carol fucking Baskins invite. Um, yeah. Carol, she's not going to come here. You murdered your fucking husband. There's enough proof to show you did that. Like, was it the Ed Hardy guy uh, with, like, the hot redhead wife? Okay, I feel like... When I say someone's hot, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. I want it to be pro-women because I think being hot is cool. And we should encourage women to be hot. Even attempt to be hot you know but anyways yeah um they said they had like even on the the joel McHale documentary uh that you they have way more evidence the demon show in the documentary so carol like carol i feel like you came out worse than uh joe exotic in that um in regards to kim kardashian um i mean it was a good move on his part because i mean kim has worked with the president the current president, hopefully, can't wait till he goes. Bye, bye, fat Donald. Oh, oh, he's about to, when January comes and he's out of office. That's gonna be cool as fuck. Um, but anyways, though, um, see, that's a situation. I think it, that should come up to Kim. Like, he he said Joe says he's innocent, but there's enough proof to show he's not innocent. But I also do not like Carol fucking Baskins um, either, um, and I think she should be in jail as well. And I think uh, the other guy, the guy who had like five wives, the, the one I want to call like a really cool guy, um, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, <laughs> Ponytail and Goatee, uh, I think he got charged for something. But like now nah, they, they're killing they're killing animals there like they're clearly killing animals and whatever the law is. So it's a weird thing. Um I feel like Kim should go with her heart and I actually think Donnie should look over the case and make up his mind. You know what? If he pardons him, I'm not going to be surprised. We're all going to think it's funny. A funny season finale series finale to 2020. Uh, just be that, uh, maybe, you know, the vaccine was approved from what, from the front. So this is Friday, December 11th. Uh, we got news. The FDA, FDA approved F- Pfizer's vaccine. So, uh, So I feel like the pandy is about to end soon. We can all, hopefully the world can go back to normal. And, uh, yeah. So I just think, uh, I think it's, I think what Joe's going to have is if he can get the attention of Donnie and, uh, fat Donnie and, uh, see if, uh, see if he can change his mind. See if he's like, I don't know if I was, I was Donald Trump. We'd be like, you know what? Fuck it. (laughs) Like, he even pardoned, like, Michael Flynn. That dude's innocent as fuck. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's all up to Donnie there. It's, it's, Donnie's, it's Donnie's decision, bud. Just make sure he has his attention. He'll, he will probably be able If you get it on Fox News, you'll get his attention. This episode of the Schwedcast is brought to you by Gamefly. Most of you are already aware of Gamefly, but for those of you who don't, it's the best video game rental subscription service for one low monthly fee. As a Twitch video game streamer myself, I know there are two types of game. One type is the game that you'll continue to go back to time and time again, like Breath of the Wild and Super Smash Brothers. And then there's those other games, you know, that you only play once and then never pick up again. And that is where Gamefly is perfect. Most games come in at around $60, and you know, these new AAA titles come in at $60. But with this link in the description of this episode, uh, your first two months will only be $10. I'm a subscriber myself, and uh, I played through Pokemon Sword, and I loved it so much that I wanted to keep that copy. And with just a click of a button, uh, and you just pay the little extra money, you get to keep the game that you rented from Gamefly. 
don't even have to worry about anything else and they'll go ahead and send you the next game i'm excited for the month of october i will be getting into luigi's mansion because that is a very spooky game and uh how that's halloween so it's the spooky season which i am super excited to play that game i already got it in the mail and i'm excited uh for once october kind of rolls around i can start playing that game and it's super fun and awesome i love gamefly i'm like i said i'm a subscriber myself but you can get your first two months for ten dollars you just got to use the link in the description of this episode and you know what start playing those games this episode of the Schwedcast is brought to you by FNX Fitness. FNX Fitness is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, uh, performance supplements to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. They also have a fantastic clothing line so you can look good while you work out as well, which I always like to look good working out. Hashtag pray for Micah. We all know what the drill. Um, with your purchase of any product from the FNX Fitness website, they even donate a gallon of water to a child in need so you know that each purchase you make uh, really is helping someone out. Uh, using promo code SWEGCAST or link in the description of this episode, you can save 15% off your order. Again, that is promo code SWEGCAST or link in the description down below. Save 15% on some great performance supplements. All right, so I... Well, what the hell am I doing? Okay, let's start this over. Okay, so I, could to continue the month of December, I will be reviewing a new Christmas movie. Right now, I'm going through the Rankin uh, Bass catalog of movies, or a couple of them. Uh, so I uh, recently watched A Year Without a Santa Claus. So, um, yeah, so here's my thoughts. I, I have some notes prepared. Um uh, if you like, I'm kind of doing this a new format. So if you do enjoy like this format of my movie reviews, cause I know a lot of people were saying they love the movie reviews, but if you like this specific format I'm doing, uh, let, let me know, uh, if it's a lot better than the way I did it. Cause last time I just kind of like wrote down a bunch of notes. Now I'm kind of like, I'm putting my thoughts down as I watch the film and then kind of making an organized thing to go through and kind of talk about. So hopefully you like that. Um, so a year without a Santa Claus, the movie starts off with Santa having a cold. And, uh, so obviously, uh, Santa's like, oh, maybe I'm just like kind of working. It's around Thanksgiving time also. So, so obviously plenty of times if you have a cold, plenty of time to just kind of like take a break, rest and recover till Christmas. So good, good shit going on here. Um, so they call the doctor to see what's going on. And then the doctor's being a fucking dick. Like the entire time, oh man, you probably still sick from last year. I'm like, you're not fucking sick from last year, you dumb piece of shit. Where is your fucking medical license? You dumb, stupid son, you dumb, stupid son of a bitch. Uh, you, he's not sick from last Christmas. All he needs to do is probably just take it easy a few days, and then he'll be fine. Uh, but uh, this is doctor so fucking negative. He's just like, well, I guess uh, no one cares about Christmas and uh, we should probably just can't fucking cancel this year. I'm like, what the fuck, Santa? You're going to cancel Christmas? It's like your one day a year you work. I think kids don't believe in fucking Santa. Let me fix my hair. God damn it. Uh, anyways, yeah, so and it's Thanksgiving, too. You're easily going to be able to make it. You're going to recover and make it to Christmas. No, he, he just said, well, I'm, I'm sick like a month before Christmas. Um, I, let's just cancel everything all the fuck together. And so uh, he's like telling everyone, let's go. Let's just fucking cancel Christmas because I'm fucking sick with a cold. And so, you know, Mrs. Claus, uh, Mrs. Claus is like, we can't cancel Christmas because obviously if you are married to Santa, uh, you are the greatest woman alive. Obviously, uh, there, every woman wants to be with Santa and that's why Santa's anorexic. That's why Mrs. Claus is anorexic at the North Pole. Obviously she has some, she has an eating disorder. Uh, she lets Santa eat all the food. That's why Santa is overweight, but she has, yep, she has an eating disorder. But anyway, Mrs. Claus, obviously the greatest human being ever, uh, in, in regards to fictional characters, uh, it's almost tied for first with, actually, no, I'm going to say it. Lily Potter is the greatest woman, fictional woman ever existing. Uh, and then Mrs. Claus is second. But anyways, Mrs. Claus is just thinking like, maybe we can get this to work out. She's like, what if I could, I could be Santa, you know, I, I could, I could do this. 
And then she's like, I put, I'm on the, this is a very progressive idea. A woman as Santa Claus in, in the year uh, 1974, super fucking progressive. Super, super progressive. And uh, so, yeah, she sings a little song. Maybe I could be Santa. And she's like, I'm not fat enough to be Santa because she has an eating disorder. Like I said, Santa can have any woman he wants. So that's why she has an eating disorder. Um, anyways. Uh, you know, she sings that song. She's like, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to be Santa this year. And then uh, the gay elves, Jingle and Jangle, uh, they show up. And he's like, Mrs. Claus. And they're like, she's like, ah, fuck. She just immediately gives up being Santa altogether after they just recognize her for not being Santa. She's just like, ah, fuck it. I guess I can't be Santa this year. I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure you know everything that's going on. You could be Santa. It's just delivering presents and bring Christmas cheer. Like I think majority of the work is you're just delivering the presents. Like just, you just immediately give up. You immediately give up about not being Santa. And you're like, Mrs. Claus. Oh, fuck it. I guess I can't be Santa. She just immediately gives up folks. She immediately gives up. And it's, I'm just like, come on, you gotta like try a little bit harder than that. Uh, you know, you gotta be better than that. Quote by me because I wrote that song. Oof. Part of Ride or Die out now on uh, all streaming services. So, yeah, and also, yeah, I didn't mention already Jingle and Jangle are gay. And, uh, yeah, um, so she, she decides to send, like, two small gay elves uh, to, uh, to kind of rally up some Christmas spirit, you know, and get everyone to give a shit about Christmas. And so she's like, oh, I'm going to send you just go just go any and fucking anywhere. Just go fucking anywhere and uh, spread some Christmas cheer. So they she gives them the smallest reindeer vixen out of all the all the, like the millions of reindeer they have probably there. Vixen. Baby vixen. And also, if you if you're thinking about uh, uh, shit, Raskin, whatever they're uh, whatever, you go to the studio is like a cinematic unit for what is it, Baskin? God damn it, did I forget it already? Baskin, is it Rask? Is it, oh, it's a Raskin Bass, right? I'm looking it up on my phone, okay? Raskin Bass. Rankin Bass. I'm, I'm R-worded. I'm a TikTok. Uh, anyway, so she's like, I'm going to send y'all going anywhere just to give a shit about Christmas. So uh, take the smallest reindeer, no protection, no seat, no seat belts even on this thing. They're just bareback in this. Uh, I don't think that's a pro- barebacking. Is that the proper term for this? <laughs> but no, um, they're bareback and uh, vixen and then riding down there. Ah, so they're, you know, they're flying anywhere and then no nowhere in particular, just anywhere. Uh, so you know, she, later Mrs. Claus hanging out with Santa, and he's like, "Ma, you're up to some." He calls her Ma, which is the international sign of a sexless marriage. So, for some reason, Santa has a sexless marriage, which is very confusing and is a big plot hole in this because everyone's fucking Santa. Any Santa can fuck anyone he wants, unless Mrs. Claus is asexual, just so Santa can uh, fuck whoever he wants. Which, conspiracy theory, we need, like, uh... What is it? A film theory on this is Santa Claus's sexless marriage. That's a, it's a theory, a film theory. Santa Claus's sexless marriage. Uh, and it was, yeah, he calls her ma. So obviously, and eventually she admits that, uh, she sent the gay elves, uh, jingle and jangle down, uh, to anywhere, like not even anywhere specifically, just anywhere, uh, which makes no fucking sense at all. Um, and then Santa's like, uh, you know that's a fucking death trap, right? Uh, the Miser Brothers, a.k.a. Uh, Donald Trump and Mike Pence, pictured right here, are gonna fucking kill them for just being around and flying with no protection, barebacking Vixen, the smallest reindeer that has ever existed. Um, so Santa, sick bedridden so I, well fuck it now i have to get up and i have to fucking save their ass so santa gets ready to fly and he doesn't even know where they fucking are so they just start flying anywhere 
So just to hear, and then eventually, you know, the elves, the gay elves, get into a little kerfluffle with uh, Mike Pence and Donald Trump, and uh, they eventually make their way. The gay elves make their way to Southtown. Uh, later in the movie, they show a newspaper article that it is in Georgia. So I did have to do some research on that. There you go. I did that for you. Uh, but yeah, no, they. Uh, it's in Georgia. Uh, Southtown. That sounds. It's a very racist. It gets off some big racist vibes. And uh, once they make it there, uh, they immediately get pulled over by a police officer on a bike. Now, uh, something about police officers, uh, we need to give them hobbies to do. Uh, They are way too into their jobs. Like, I've worked shitty day jobs, and I am not as interested in that. And being a cop cannot be that interesting. Like, this is what you went to school for, to give people fucking tickets and make them lose their hard-earned money, the money that you don't necessarily make. And this cop gives off racist vibe, too. He had a mustache. I mean, that's the only proof I have, but it, it made sense to me when I watched the movie. Um, but the cop, everyone in Southtown has to be racist. I didn't see a single black kid in that town. Like, it had to be segregated. And it's it's it was... 74, and but it gave like old school vibes. It didn't feel like it was in the 70s. So yeah, the town had to be racist and segregated. It had to be. I'm just, I'm not the, I'm just the messenger people. So this racist town, the racist cop, they give him a ticket for looking funny. From looking funny on a Sunday, dressed in a silly outfit on a Sunday and for riding a vixen. Like that's not a fucking law. That's not real law. Dressing funny. That's not a law. Oh, law, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And also, in the North, well, they're not even, like, citizens of the United States or citizens of the state of Georgia. So, nevertheless, uh, they're not paying that fucking ticket, and that's for sure. Um, so, the gay elves, they end up visiting some school children, so that's all also weird. Like, no one gave a shit about kids in the 70s, I guess. Uh, but, uh, no, every, all the kids were like, fuck Santa, we don't give a shit about him. And, uh... Yeah, and then eventually Vixen gets uh, taken by the dog pound. And, oh, yeah, here's the disguise they had for Vixen. They put brown socks on his antlers. Like, it's a fucking dog. It's a dog. Yeah, it's our dog. Uh, The dog catcher didn't notice uh, two socks where ears should be and deer hooves. Like, how dumb is this dog catcher? That's also. Yeah, that guy's probably racist, too. That's very southern energy right there. Just a really dumb idiot. Um and now they catch your vixen, the dog pound, and uh, dog pound's like, well, maybe you could talk to the mayor. Maybe he could do something. Like, um, from this, okay, um, this makes no fucking sense at all. Um, so they visit the mayor, who's also giving me big racist vibes, and he's just like, fucking, I'm like, oh, are you Santa? I'm like, I haven't done any job in fucking years. Our town consists of pulling people over for riding deer in the middle of the street. What the fuck do you think I'm up to right now? Um... So yeah, uh, and so he's like, "Listen, okay, I'll let your I'll let your dog out, your dog with socks on, so yours out, if you make it snow in Southtown." I was like, "Okay, well, I guess we're doing this. This is this is our journey now." Um, okay, uh, so they're like, "Let's get him in Southtown." So they head off to meet uh, Mrs. Claus or Ma, as you would call your partner in a sexless marriage, uh, to see what they can do about talking to the Miser Brothers. Uh, later, though, I flashes to Santa and. Uh, all Santa fucking does is just pay them human money and gets Vixen out, pulls off the sock ears, and the, the dog catcher's like, oh my gosh, a real life reindeer. Like, what the, what the hell is going on right now? You've got, what, what the hell? If, if you put, I could easily tell a deer and a dog apart. I, I think that's the scene that broke me. A real life deer. Wow. Can't believe it. Um. Then okay, all right. So let me get back on track. Okay. Um. So later on, they meet up with the uh, Mrs. Claus and the the Gales, and they uh, meet the first Miser brother, uh, Snow Miser, who is actually both the Miser brothers are very gay. And I know you're thinking, oh, you just think anyone's gay in these movies. I back this shit up. So if you're a gay man. And someone shows up to your home, and the first thing you decide to do is sing a show tune? That's kind of gay. That's a gay thing to do. Straight men don't do that. Straight women don't do that. Gay women don't do that. Only gay men do that. 
I mean, I love I love show tunes. It's my like Jesus Christ, my hair. It's just like it's like this weird it's this hair clay I use. I was like, I don't need to dress anything up. I'll just stay out for the episode. Um But no, um anyways, I like show tunes as much as the next guy, but uh if someone comes to my home, I'm not singing them a song as soon as they walk in. I'm Mr. Sweezy. I'm number one. Da, 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 da. I'm good at foreplay and kissing your mom. Ba, da, da, da. They call me Sweezy. Whatever I touch falls in love as my crush. I'm too much. Like, I don't do that because I'm straight. And so, um... The deal they want to make is uh, they want to make it snow in Southtown. And uh, obviously, Snow Miser's cool with it, uh, but that territory is run by Heat Miser, who is also gay because when people come into his home, he starts singing immediately. And as a musician myself, I can confirm that that's pretty fucking gay. Um, and so they go there, and uh, Heat Miser's like, all right, well, if he gets Southtown, I want the North Pole. Which seems like a fair compromise, but these little assholes had to fight and be like, I'm not compromising, you know? Fair deal is a fair deal, but uh, fuck you, uh, brother. And so uh, Mrs. Claus pulls a Hail Mary and decides to go to their mother. And uh, turns out these two are big mama's boys and they have super big mommy issues. So they eventually agree to do that. Problem solved, starts snowing in Southtown and uh, Christmas spirit is alive. But apparently the kids realize that Santa's going to cancel Christmas. Um, also, no, it starts snowing in Southtown, and the snow in the South is the apocalypse, okay? Like, you're dying. Like, no one knows how to drive on streets with, like, no snow on it. People don't really know how to drive down here anyways. Put some snow there. Put any obstacle in there. We're fucked. So, uh... It's actually a bad thing to do in the South, make it snow. So uh, they murdered a ton of people uh, to give for this mayor to release a reindeer dog. Um, so anyways, um, so I guess the newspapers get a hold that Santa's going to cancel Christmas. So all these kids start sending letters and gifts into Santa um, after that weird debacle. Um, but uh, and then this creepy little girl saying, I'll have a blue Christmas without. And I've always thought that was like a breakup song. So it's weird for a little girl to sing that to a grown man. And I can't be the only one who's weirded out by that. So uh, after after that heartwarming message, Santa realizes that. Uh, that he should not cancel Christmas and decides to get back to work. Uh, and realizes that it's still pretty, Christmas is still pretty far away. So, uh, yeah, I could probably recover from this cold. And uh, then Santa brings Christmas to uh, to everyone. So, um, in conclusion, the moral of this story is even Santa can have an existential crisis every once in a while. And it's okay. We can all have an existential crisis because we all do it. And uh, this story... Um, at least this one had a moral to it, unlike Rudolph, but at the same time, the, the journey to get there was a little crazy. I'm going to send gay elves to go anywhere, spread Christmas cheers. Oh yeah, they're going to die. Disguise the reindeer as a dog. The dog gets captured. They have to meet two gay brothers to change the weather. Uh, everyone... Wants Santa to do good. Santa does his job. I mean, like, the journey to get there, like, the idea of Santa having the existential crisis of, I don't know if I'm, everyone's really into Christmas anymore. And then everyone's like, oh, Santa, we appreciate you so much. And, like, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes people, sometimes you need to tell people that you care about them. And that's a good moral. It's just, in in this specific situation, uh, the destination uh, was better than the journey, uh, because the journey, um, there's a lot going on along the way on the journey, and uh, I don't think we can take it. All right, that's the movie. Um, so let me just, uh, I have like two thoughts, and then we'll go to our next break and go into our love advice. Um, so uh, a lot. So there's like a good chance like 50% of people are going to get COVID, which means I could get COVID. Um, I'll still probably be able to do the show, though, unless I die. 
which I might, I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, if I get COVID, um, and I'm not able to taste anything, I'm going hardcore dieting, like eating food just to like give me energy and just be like, I'm losing weight. I am fucking losing weight. And, uh, yeah, losing weight exponentially. And I'm going to take advantage of that. Also, okay, the next thing I have before we go to our break, astrology is fucking stupid, okay? Um, I'm having to deal with a bunch of women who are into astrology, and it's just fucking stupid. Like, women will say, you buy skins for your video games? It's like, you believe dead stars control your personality? It's like, I'm lame for watching anime games and anime movies and watching video, playing video games, but uh, you're into uh, thinking the stars determine your personality? Uh, And you know what? You can believe what you want. I don't give a shit, but don't force your beliefs on me. You know, I don't, I don't force my beliefs on you unless you're listening to this. And I probably do myself, but, uh, I don't, I, I might be better because I don't actually said I was a total Leo. Uh, so, uh, bum, 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 so, yeah, and, uh, if you think dead stars determine your personality, you don't have a good personality. I'm just going to let you know that. Your personality probably sucks. And uh, the day you were born does not determine shit about you. It just determines that you were born on a certain day. And uh, your personality is determined by how you grew up in overtime. So that's my hard hitting journalism for you so if you believe in astrology um figure out a better personality for yourself this episode of the schweg cast is brought to you by duke cannon supply company's beer and bourbon box uh, duke cannon hails from a simpler time a time when the term handyman was redundant a time when chivalry wasn't considered old-fashioned duke cannon's purpose is simple to make superior quality grooming goods that meet the high standards of hard working men in the history of great duos the partnership of beer and bourbon is even more important to our way of life than mac and cheese or if you're british fish and chips comes complete with three big beer soaps a deliciously scented sandalwood soap made with old milwaukee beer a fresh citrus woodsy offering made with the deschutes fresh squeezed ipa and a warm cedar scent made with budweiser and one big american bourbon soap and a rich oak barrel scented bar made with buffalo trace bourbon a perfect gift for the gentleman who appreciates a fine drink and a distinguished fragrance use the link in our description to get free shipping on your order over 20 dollars this episode of the Schwedcast is brought to you by Honey. Honey is a free browser extension you can download using the link in the description of this episode. Honey searches the entire internet for promo codes, coupon codes, free shipping, and anything else that will save you money when buying things online. It is 100% free, and at no point will you have to pay for it with any microtransactions. It's just as simple as pressing a single button, and you can start saving money. It's that simple. I use Honey myself. I've been using it for years, and it's a great way to save money on pizza. Uh, it's a great way to for me to buy audio equipment online it always saves me money i've gotten 40 percent. i've gotten 50 percent even before it is so great i love honey and you will too and if you don't use honey it's basically throwing money away so use the link in the description of this episode s- install it on your web browser whether that's chrome safari opera opera whatever it's called and start saving money on things you buy every day anyways All right, now it's time for me to give advice on your love lives. I'm going to guide you to a treasure uh, that I cannot possess. And uh, let me see what I can do about uh, solving your relationship problems. Uh, This is what I'm here for. All right, first up, we got introducing my girlfriend to Smash Brothers. All right, game I love to play. I really enjoy playing Smash Brothers. I've been playing for years, and I'm in a very healthy relationship. My girlfriend, in all her sweetness, who has played it a few times in the past, decided she wanted to play with me. I was pretty excited to teach her how to play. She watched some intro videos on YouTube and was ready to hop in. Not wanting her to learn how to play incorrectly, I didn't let her win. This is was before I learned that she is an incredibly sore loser. Does anyone have any advice on how I can play with her and not feel like a dickhead afterwards? I tried letting her win, but I think she could tell what I was doing, and I'm not too sure how to proceed. 
any advice would be much appreciated. Um, first of all, I want to say that's rough, buddy, because I talk a lot of shit during Smash, and if a lady would like to play with me, actually, because I, I my general rule with video games is unless we're sleeping together and in the situation where I'm playing with her kids or if I'm sleeping with their mom, uh, I'm not going easy on them. So, because you're in a situation like you don't want to go easy on her, but uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do because I play Smash 2. Um, first, one thing you can do is just let her practice because practicing is going to help her out a lot. Um, she's probably not good enough to play online. I'm barely good enough to play online, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm still better than Steve and TJ. Uh, so like having her practice is going to be a really good thing. Uh, just playing with NPCs, trying to get up to like level nines and just like whoop ass, uh, in regards to that. Um, anyways, if there's a way you can nerf, you can make it so you have like a handicap playing, um, maybe the best situation, at least, you know, to like help her catch up and get really good. Once she starts whooping your ass though, like it's game over, bud. Like I don't even let kids beat me unless I'm sleeping with their mom. So, um, it, I mean, it's a good lesson, but also you want her to touch your penis. Uh, I know that's a controversial thing apparently on the show to want a woman to touch your penis. Um, and you know who you are. Uh, but I say, if you want her to continue to touch your penis, uh, try to put a handicap on yourself to help you. I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, maybe play with items and then just make sure that you're not allowed to pick up any items that way she can kind of get some items and stuff like that. And that way, at least it can be a fair fight until she's able to kind of like catch up and give you a fair fight. But, uh, it's very difficult in regards to smash because that game, I just, I just, that game is so competitive. If you look at the competitive scene on that game, it's just extreme. Like I've never seen a game more like, uh, like intense competitively than smash because it's just, uh, it's just, it's just one of those games. They, they created a, something really good with the game and, uh, you know, if you have to, so I feel like I'd rather play Smash against someone than even if I get my ass whooped. I'd rather play Smash than actually do an, an actual fist fight because I feel like uh, if we really need to duke it out, I feel like Smash is a lot better. And none of our faces look bad or hair, hair, face and groins. It's my usual fight rule. So, all right, no touching of the head, face, face, hair or groin is the rule I go with. So uh, just figure out a way to handicap yourself. I'm going to think that is I'm thinking playing with items and then not allowing yourself to have items, but like letting her, you know, use the items as she can, as she can get to them. See if she can get to that. Um, next question I got here. Um, trying to surprise my hubby with Cyberpunk 2077 launch. Any advice on how to make it even? <clears throat> I'm like trying to talk to her, but I'm getting this is like that where you're like getting so old, you're turning gross. That's me. Um, any advice on how to make it even more special? Uh, more details. I am surprising my man with cyberpunk 2077 launch. I want to buy him snacks, make him cyberpunk 2077 themed cocktails, slash strings and decorate his room in a cyberpunk 2077 fashion. Any advice on how I can make it even more special? Any cocktail recipe ideas, any advice for gamers? All right. So I actually had to put a note here so I didn't forget it. Um, all right. So when he first starts playing the game, give him a blowjob because I don't know we're getting into controversial topics of wanting your penis touched. Uh, but no, I think a blowjob, giving him a blowjob while he plays a game would be, would just probably make the, yeah, man, I remember my first time playing Cyberpunk 2077. I, I was like turning on the PlayStation. Hopefully it's a place. Uh, if it's an Xbox, you're, you could be a woman. If you're not a woman, okay, I guess. If he's Xbox, I'm assuming this is a man surprising another man. But uh, if you're a woman, he's probably playing PlayStation. Um, best thing I can say, uh, yeah, give him a blowjob. Actually, that works even if you're gay. So uh, best thing, give him a blowjob. So the memory of him getting a blowjob the first time he played Cyberpunk 2077 uh, will always be in his heart. And that's something. We are pro, pro uh, getting your penis touched on this show. Uh, that should be a shirt, pro getting your penis touched. And... That is something we will be forever. Pro getting your penis touched. So, yeah, best thing I can tell you, give him a blowjob. Everyone likes a blowjob, and uh, he's never going to say no. If, he's, if a guy says no to a blowjob, he's gay. No, he's not gay. Actually, he's asexual. He's asexual, because I don't care about asexual people. Um, yeah, he's asexual. If you don't like getting your penis touched, you're asexual. Sorry, Josh. Um, but uh, anyways, let's move on to the next question. Advice on acting a girl's 
asking for a girl's number. All right, so I take the bus to and from work, night shift, and on my way home, there's always the girl on my bus who gets off at the stop as well. I'd really like to talk to her and get to know her more, but I am terrible at at talking to girls in real life and have some major social anxiety, so I don't really know how to start a conversation, ask for her number, or even get the courage to talk to her. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. All right, so... Here's uh, from the master here. I know how to get a girl's phone number. Um, First thing you're going to have to do, um, from what it looks like, uh, you're going to have to figure out a way to talk to her. Now, you could make some, uh, you could make up some questions. Uh, I mean, you're seeing her every day on the bus. So kind of see if she's looking at anything, wearing anything, stuff like that. Kind of like get that in memory that there's an interest that you mutually have. So to create the like conversation topic. So say... Let's say, um, let's say she's wearing a Star Wars shirt because women wear Star Wars shirts. And, uh, so you can go up to her and like, whoa, you like, do you like Star Wars? Um, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite movie, uh, in the Star Wars franchise? And then she'll, if she's quality, she'll say, well, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi is pretty good. Uh, you know, I grew up on the prequels, so I always, there's always a special place in my heart. And I know that the complaints people have about them, so I understand, um, I do. I did enjoy the sequel trilogy, but I kind of wish they were more organized and had a, like kind of a plan at the beginning of it. You're like, yeah, well, you know, I like Return of the Jedi. There's always something about endings that I really enjoy. So you start off conversation like that, and then you'd be like, you know, we need to talk about Star Wars more often. Can I get your? You need to put your number, and then just kind of put your phone to her and have her and put her number in, and then that's how you get her number. That's I mean, that's a trick that works. Um, one time uh, there was a girl. Uh, she was Latina. And uh, I didn't know how to say or write her name. One time I tricked, I was like, okay, I'm okay. If I can see her name written down, I think I'll be able to uh, like remember how to say it. So, and I gave her my number with the contact information. And then she's like, well, yeah, well, I have it. I'll just give you my number. And that worked. That was a really cool one. I haven't talked to her ever since. But, anyways, it's the end justifies the memes. So. That's kind of more of the story. Uh, best thing I can do, um, just first, you got to start that conversation. So figure out a way to start a conversation with her. Um, I don't know this girl. Um, she could be a bitch. So you never know about that. Women can be bitches. Bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks. Remember that. Remember that. Bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks. Um, but anyways, you know, start a conversation. If she's cool, you know, try to you kind of got to sneak in her numbers. Like, oh, what's your number? We need to talk more. And like, oh, you're so cool. We got to hang out sometime and stuff like that. Just kind of kind of be a friendly guy, you know, be a cool. No, don't be a cool guy, but uh, be be a, be friendly, like at least be friends with her because uh, eventually friends have sex with each other. And that's the way it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question. My crush said IDK. Hopefully she said, I don't know instead of IDK when I asked her to be my girlfriend. Please. I really hope she said, I don't know instead of IDK. I really, God, please may, may go back and use a time machine. Let's, if you're going to say IDK, say, I don't know. Just say that. All right. Let's read. Let's read everything. Uh, That's rough, buddy. Okay. 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 She was at my house and I asked her while we were cuddling together and she said, IDK, don't you think we're going too fast? What should I do? It's obviously she likes me. Should I just keep talking to her and ask again at a later date? All right, buddy. That's rough, buddy. Okay. So when she said IDK, what she really meant is sometimes some words are silent. So I think with this whole statement, I'm going to say she says, I don't know about a relationship with you. Don't you think we're going too fast? Sometimes when she says, uh, I'm not ready for a relationship or is like, I don't I don't think I want a relationship right now. A lot of times there are some silent words in there that you may not know because men are not women and women think you get the silent words words that she says uh like so say you're talking to someone she says i don't want a relationship right now what she really means is i don't want a relationship right now and then the silent words are with you so she sounds like she is uh getting them cuddles um but uh if you're cuddling like you you're already need to be boyfriend girlfriend at least unless you're 
uh, one night stands. Uh, doesn't I mean you got to be a ride or die, or you just need to use her for sex. Ride or die out now on Spotify, Apple Music, Title, Deezer, Amazon, anywhere you get your music, stream your music, buy your music. Uh, ride or die by Shweezy out now. Uh, best thing I could tell you, bro, um, is that if when you know, yeah, it should be easy. And if she's saying, I don't know, she's saying, I don't know, dot, dot, dot with you. And uh, that's the that's the hard part of life. And, you know, that's rough, buddy. But the uh, best thing I can say is, look, we can't be doing this. Uh, this is the type of guy you get. So we have to decide if we're going to be ride or die out now, you know, on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, or if we're going to be a thing, we're going to be ride or die for each other. Or if we're just going to be sleeping around with each other, just being pieces of shit, sleeping around, you're using me for some gain, and uh, someone messaged me, or is that? Ah, uh, someone might have did something, I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore, uh, but no. Um, if if you don't, don't, and she doesn't like you, she doesn't like you. So, it's pretty simple. If, it's, if, if you asked her and you thought you are at a point you should have asked, and she says, I don't know. It's a no. She's just being nice. And uh, and she keeps using you. She's toxic. She's addicted to you. But you know that she's toxic. So, yeah, buddy. Uh, I feel you. That's rough, buddy. But if she's using you, remember. Be gone, fuck! Tell her that. Tell her to fuck off. All right, next next question I got. My girlfriend only sees me when she comes to sleep with me. Ooh, that's interesting. Be gone, fuck! Okay. My girlfriend of three months only sees me when she comes over to sleep with me late at night, then leaves first thing in the morning. I've asked her to do fun things with me so we can make memories together, but she is always too busy. For a little background, my girlfriend is a very busy person. She is taking an overload of college credits and is working a job on top of that. She wants to make time for her friends, and she usually does something with them nearly every day, whether that be eating a meal with them or going out. I've asked her to do some of those things with me, but she says she can't give me more time because she already spends time with me at night while i love spending that night with her i want her to do things with me that allow us to talk and have a good time together i feel like i ask her too often to do things with me and i always get told that she is too busy i feel like i'm being clingy by always asking but she never asked me to do to do things so how else am i supposed to ever do something with her what are ways that I should approach this? I know that it's not appropriate for me to ask her to stop spending time with her friends to see me, but what else can I do? Any advice is greatly appreciated as I really care for my girlfriend and want us to work out. Buddy. Ooh. That's rough, buddy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to break this to you. You're the second boyfriend. You're not the first boyfriend. You're the one she's cheating on her boyfriend with. Uh, she's probably saying you're her boyfriend girlfriend to make you feel happy. Um, if she's only spending time with you at night to have sex, but she's never taking you out in public and also never taking you to her meet her friends. Yeah, she's cheating on her other significant other with you hanging out with her friends every day. She's hanging out with her actual boyfriend every day, buddy. Um, buddy, you're getting played. And I know sometimes you can't see you can't see your own problems. That's rough, buddy. But yeah, you're the one she's cheating on her boyfriend with. Um, because uh, there's a thing, though, if you have a girlfriend, you're going to you're going to be hanging out with her and her friends. Uh, and as often as she says she's spending time with her friends, she's bring, she's going to have to bring you along for it. And I'm always into girls telling the problems their friend because i can always uh chime in and you know what i'm doing right now and just like chime in i had a friend my friend's girlfriend was talking with her other friend uh about like she went on a date with him and he was better looking on the apps than he was in person and then she had to like let him down i'm like you know what you should do just get really weird all of a sudden that'll get him away and then she said her friend got like a dick pic but it was a micro penis in like a dick cage or something like that i'm like send me the picture of the dick cage and i'm still waiting on that photo because i want to see the background of that photo because i want to know what this guy's life is he has a micro penis his dick in a cage i want to see the background of his home i want to see his home i want to see his living environment 
What kind of towels does he use? I want to know that stuff. But no, dude, uh, you're the one she's cheating on with. And uh, if she really liked you, she'd put in the time for you more than what she's giving you right now. Um, very easy. You make time for things that are important to you. And uh, having sex with you is important to her, but spending time with you doing other shit is not important to her. Um, she's using you for sex, and she gets her emotional support from her boyfriend, and uh, that is not cool. So what I will tell you to do is go up to her, uh, get your feet on the ground, firm, uh, firm stance, and then go, Be gone, fuck! And tell her to fuck off, because you got to tell her it's either me or your your bitch other boyfriend that you're cheating on me with. And actually, you should figure out who he's cheating on you with and be like, Hey, bud, um, your girlfriend gave me head last night. And, uh, yeah, apparently, uh, I thought we were together, but apparently, apparently, uh, we are not together. And so for you, I say, that's rough, buddy. But, uh, yeah. And maybe she should break up with you because this is the type of guy you get. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, do that, uh, to get over it. I suggest drinking or marijuana, but if you do meth, please take a video and post it on the internet because that's funny. What you got to do? Because uh, you have some realizations to do, my friends, and uh, it's not going to be easy. Uh, it's not going to be easy, um, but uh, I'm just going to play a random one. That's rough, buddy. Oh, I already used that one. Simp. Yeah, you might be a simp. So I think, oh, you might be a simp. All right. Next question. Uh, my husband masturbates daily and declines my sexual advances. I know masturbation is part of a healthy sex life. So you... So you are not stupid. The big, that being said, in the past, my husband stopped masturbating as he was using porn and realized it was negatively affecting our sexual relationship. During that break, we had frequent sex, both initiating for about a year or two. Recently, he has started masturbating without porn, but almost daily. He has stopped touching me sexually and recently has started declining my sexual advances, including no strings attached blowjobs. Damn, buddy. Uh... Uh, this is for her. That's rough, buddy. Okay. Um, I know part of it is due to depression, body image insecurities, and the EBB and flow, ebb and flow of life. That's how you say it. Part of it is our biology. He likes sex in the morning. I prefer in the evening, but he stopped initiating in the mornings and he prefers to masturbate. I also know that I put on weight, copious amounts, but I am thicker. What he says is his preference, but now I'm not so sure. We talked about it and he knows how I feel that I like, I'd like to have sex with him more often. My question is this. We've been together for nine years. We are now in our 30s. Uh, is this just the decline that people joke about or do you think it's worth fighting for uh, can you shred any light based on personal experience okay um i don't have a wife or a husband um shows you said 32 male and 30 female you're not that old so here's the thing um uh, like i've like i've mentioned on the show jizz or nut your nuts or your jizz is poison in a man's body. So men need to frequently get the poison out of their bodies. And so that either has to be with your hand, the fleshlight, with your mouth, or your vagina or asshole. Um, it's just, the, that's the way it is. And so um, you understand that in a sense where if you don't want to have sex, he can, you can, you understand that he needs to get the poison out. And that's very respectful. You are a ride or die. And, uh, and I really like that. So um, you're a cool person. And so I respect you as a human being. Um, so the big thing, though, because I, you know, I grew up evangelical Christian. And so they're always like they're always like, oh, if you uh, if you watch porn, uh, you won't have time for your wife. You, you're going to decline your wife and hurt your wife's feelings. So or, you know, shit like that. So. Um, and the situation, the situation I, you know, I had to unlearn from that is, um, you're, if you're married or have a significant other, your first option for getting the poison out of your penis is with a human woman. That should be your first option. If she says no, because she's not in the mood, you just get that out yourself. You get the poison out yourself. You just get the poison out either way. Um, as long as you both understand, she sounds like she understands that. It's like, Hey, if I can't have sex with you, I'm, I need to bust a nut real bad and if i can't do that with you i'm gonna figure it out myself because because that is that's actual medic medically sound like it's healthy like 
And also, like, I read something like you need to jerk yourself off once a month just for your prostate health because if you find anything weird feeling down there, that way you can be alert and go to a doctor. It's just kind of general maintenance uh, for that. So, um, yeah, so you should be at least jerking off yourself once a month. It's just for your own health. Um, but nonetheless, though, so you understand that uh, his he you need to let him understand that his fir- her his first choice to bust a nut needs to be with you, not with someone else. Um, I feel like, and if he likes sex in the morning, so say he, he wants to get a nut, needs to bust a nut first thing in the morning. Um, just let him do that on his own. But in the evenings, he should be able to recover and go again by the evening. I take antidepressants, which means my libido goes down and I can still at least jerk off two times a day if I want to. Um, I think one is the best because sometimes the second time it's like, time, second time could be a lot of work. Uh, but no, one to two times. I feel like anyone could do like two times a day, even if you're on like Propecia or something like that. Uh, I don't think it's your weight is a problem unless you just really let yourself go. And then he's like, I am not attracted to you anymore. Um, so I think that he needs to understand that you need to be the first choice when but busting a nut. Um, if, if he's has a hard time getting it up, just put on porn in the background. You know what? Well, you've been, you've been together for nine years and probably having sex before that. So, I mean, like, sex with the same person has to get boring eventually eventually you have to like figure things out and go back up again so i mean it's like imagine having to watch the same porn video over and over again like that's the only way you're allowed to get off like you're gonna get bored with it after a while so i mean maybe you can always spice things up but maybe you know put on if you're cool with it put on porn in the background you know have some fun but sometimes it's kind of intimate so that could be weird all right next question we got like two more questions all right uh how do i ask a guy if he's still interested we seem to hardly text between dates and it's disappointing need advice we matched on tinder in october i'm not looking for a very serious relationship at the moment we both agreed on casual dating friends with benefits situation we went out thrice we went out with the band three times the band thrice God is in the ambulance, I know. He's a really affectionate person. We're always holding hands, and he's almost slept with each other on our last date. I stopped him since I'm a virgin and have not actually had sex. Wait, friends with benefit situation, but you're a virgin and never had sex before? We enjoy spending time together. Okay. Um, the problem comes in where he hardly seems to text or call me, and I've always associated how much a person communicates with me to how interested the person is, and in this case, it doesn't seem like it. He's otherwise mostly online, but that could be for work, but also active on social media. I don't expect him to talk to me all day sometimes. Would be nice. How do I t- ask him if he's interested in continuing this, or has he lost interest, which is fair, or is it too much? I asked him if we could meet this coming weekend, but he told me he was busy and was planning on traveling next week uh, so not sure if i'll be able to discuss this in person anytime soon what would you guys do in snow okay i'm confused with some of the bullshit you're giving me you want to okay so you don't want anything serious and you agree with that but then you said friends with ben- do you know what friends with benefits is it means you're having sex but you're not together that's what friends with benefits is um and then you said you're a virgin he's probably not talking to you because you're a virgin and you're not having sex with him to be honest with you um and also virginity how many partners you have i i want i don't think it's a big deal i don't t- talk about like when I lost my virginity or like my, like how many, my number, I don't, I purposely do not tell people that because one, it doesn't matter. And two, I'm also a songwriter and I write music about these women. So I don't want their like lives being ruined by me. I want to ruin their lives my own way. So that's probably a big thing. We almost had sex, but I stopped him. Yeah. He's probably pissed at you and not interested anymore. I mean, obviously to me, virginity is like, just lose it. You get it over with. I mean, it's not a big deal to me. It's not a big deal. We, we, I, and I think that's a problem, at least with, uh, my c- Christian upbringing that we, I, we put like virginity on like an, a pedestal and like, it's such a good thing to have your virginity. And then you lose it and you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's not a big deal at all, but no, he's probably not interested in you because he's not going to have sex with you. And also I know women take a bigger, take a bigger shit about this, but, uh, do you want to lose your virginity to this guy? And then you're going to stop him and like not do anything serious. Like don't you're leading, you're leading him on bitch. So just leave him the fuck alone. Be I, gone. I hit two buttons at the same time. Okay. 
Leave him the fuck alone and move on. Be gone, fuck! So, yeah, you're the problem in this situation. Um, you're trying to lead him on and not letting him bust a nut. So, uh, you're the thought. Be gone, fuck! And uh, if anyone has a problem with that situation... Pretty bold of you little fucks to assume that I'm not God. And, uh, yeah. Sweezy. I'm Sweezy, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, so be gone, thoughts. Uh, all right, last question of the podcast. Uh, my girlfriend is gross. Right, I said the best one for last. Advice needed. All right, this one's a short one. So my 24... I'm So I, he's 24 in male. Uh, girlfriend, she's also 24, and I have been together for three months. Over the short period of t- period, she has increasingly gotten a lot more comfortable around me, but has become too comfortable and just lost her manners. She has no problem farting around me, which is fine, but periodically she'll come over to the bedside while I'm laying there on my phone before getting up, pull her pants and underwear down, and pull her bare ass right in my face in farts <laughs> this is extremely childish and gross she thinks it's hilarious i think it's unsexy and immature for the record i don't do this stuff to her yeah buddy I... <laughs> jesus christ but maybe i should to see how she likes it other than this things are good with us but this is her this has created somewhat of a rocky road any advice is welcome oh my fucking god dude that's fucking hilarious um so uh best advice i can uh give you in this situation um tell her to not spread her bare ass cheeks over your face and fart one you could eat like there's fecal matter in her ass you could get pink eye or some other infection on your like your face or something like that um that's a that's probably that mainly that's probably the biggest thing first uh there's a medical issue second of all you obviously don't think it's funny and you don't like it like farting around each other like you can't expect her to hold in her farts because i'm not in the relationships i've been i'm not holding in my farts i'm letting them rip i'm letting them rip and you know what gotta let her do it during sex is different. Don't queef or fart during sex. Uh, that's just a, a, the moral code of my Jesus Christ. Dude. I just imagine her bare ass cheeks. Oh, dude, imagine her. Imagining her like taking a shit on you. Oh my gosh. She accidentally takes a shit on you. Dude. Um. Any advice is welcome. Um, have you just thought of the obvious for a second? Like, just think, hmm, what should I do in this situation? Hey, how about you tell her to stop spreading her bare ass cheeks on your face and farting? Because fecal matter is coming out of there and just air particles going to get in your eye. And then you're going to get it like pink eye. And that's just embarrassing. You don't want pink eye. So I think your situation is pretty simple. Hey, can you not? You could be nice about it. Hey, can you not fart in my face? I don't think it's funny, and I'm worried I'm going to get pink eye or something. You could just say that. I don't want to get pink eye. So, uh, yeah. That's rough, buddy. And if it doesn't work out and you start fighting, just be like, Be gone, fuck! Half of my love advice is just tell, just half of my love advice can just be solved with, Be gone, fuck! And, uh, yeah. I guess uh, that's it. Just tell her to stop farting in your face and uh, just be a bitch when you don't, because that's a justifiable occurrence to be a bitch. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> listening, watching this new episode of Cancel Sweezy. We're at double digits now, and uh, it's only going downhill from here. So thank you so much. I hope I offended every single one of you. Uh, if you have any emails, questions, comments, concerns, you can feel free to email them at the at gmail.com. Uh, questions, comments, concern, always feel free. I'm always down to hear all of them. Uh, I would like to start something where I uh, rank dick pics and describe dick pics. So ladies listening to the show, if you've received a dick pic, please send them my way. I want to do a psychological analysis of that. So feel free to send those to me. I won't be grossed out. I will laugh. No matter if it isn't funny, I will still probably laugh. Uh, And also my new EP, Ride or Die, available now everywhere. Amazon, Spotify, Apple, Tidal, Deezer, YouTube, 
Pornhub, and all those great places. Uh, but uh, and the listening party is still available on my Facebook page, but you can just still listen to it on your preferred streaming site. Uh, it's great. I uh, Remember, I play video games on Twitch Mondays and Thursdays. Press the subscribe button if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Follow if you don't, but at least follow me. Don't be... Don't be stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. And uh, like and subscribe to this show on YouTube or wherever you're listening to podcasts at. Leave and like a review. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Yeah. And I really like that. So uh, subscribe wherever you're getting your shows at. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, if you want ad-free episodes, uh, feel free to hit up the Patreon page. $5 a month gets you ad-free episodes be really cool and uh and i really like that so uh take it easy everyone uh, i'm up out of here uh catch you back next week uh with more content that makes you question your life decisions and uh like always stay awesome Hashtag pray for Micah. Hey, you. You just finished a full episode of the Schwegcast. I hope your brain cells don't hurt. Uh, if you want to support this show financially in the best way possible, go check us out on Patreon for $5 a month. You, yes, you can get ad free episodes of the Schwegcast and is the best way to personally support me and this channel.